copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Attention all Los Angeles County Sheriff's cars broadcast 100 days. A dead body has been found under the Spring Street Bridge in North Long Beach. That's all. Rolls and Rolls. announcement a few weeks ago, Rio Grande revolutionized the gasoline industry. Today, the independent dealers selling Rio Grande's new fuel gas have the gasoline bootleggers on the run. Refiners of sulfuric, carbon-laden gasolines are losing business, regardless of their cut prices, because motorists now know that no gasoline is safe to use unless it equals United States Government Specification Number VBG101. Rio Grande offers motorists the first low-price gasoline guaranteed to exceed this government specification. Rio Grande's new G-Gas sets a new high-quality standard in the low-price market. If you are tempted to buy cut-price gasoline, first ask to see a written guarantee that it meets government specifications. If it doesn't, don't buy it. Drive into a Rio Grande station. Look at the written guarantee on the G-Gas pump, proving that it exceeds United States government specifications. The new G-Gas is the finest gasoline in the low-price field. But make no mistake, fine as it is, Rio Grande's G-Gas is not as good a value as Rio Grande cracked gasoline. For very little more per gallon, you get 100% efficiency, such as ethyl and police car performance. You see, Rio Grande's cracked gasoline is refined by a patented process so that it exceeds even government top grade emergency certification. That's why police officials of so many communities have chosen cracks in competition with every other gasoline available to power more police cars, ambulances, fire engines, and other emergency equipment than any other brand. So if you are a user of low price gasoline, protect yourself by getting Rio Grande guaranteed free gas. But if you want the best buy for your money, more speed, more power, more mileage, more value. Then use the gasoline for each car use. Rio Grande Crack. Tonight, Calling All Cars presents a guest artist, the well-known English stage and screen star, Miss Elsie Preston, who will be heard in tonight's dramatization in the part of Mrs. Lady Ransom. It is our great pleasure to present Sheriff Dean Biscoli of Los Angeles County. Sheriff Biscoli. Good evening, my friends. There is no saying that there is honor among thieves. During the racketeer days of prohibition, the press, the literature, and the cinema of the nation made much of this alleged stern code of ethics and honor which prevailed in the underworld. We law enforcement officers who should be in a position to know find little evidence of this asserted quality in the criminal. We find the opposite. There is no honor among thieves. Yes, sexual lawbreaker, we find is a conscientious creature who is interested only in saving himself. The story which we bring you tonight from the office of my Bureau of Investigation tells of a group of self-styled hard guys who operated upon this unsound logic. They ran through the form, just as they all do. But when you bring any would-be big-shot criminal out into the open and take his gun away from him, he becomes the most spineless, loathsome, and skulking parasite our civilization has produced and foolishly tolerates. And now a word to the youngsters who may be listening. Don't believe that these criminals you hear about on calling all cars are dashing, heroic, and romantic figures, for they are not. They are dishonest, lazy, and stupid. Dishonest and lazy because they would rather 
steal and earn a living, stupid because they think they can get away with it. And boys and girls, they never do. It is a few days after Christmas in 1932 that Grace Waltz and two girlfriends who are house guests have just retired when there is a knock at the door. Bertha Gray, one of the guests, goes to the door. Who's there? It's Ray Collins. Who is it? I'll tell you what, let us hear it. Just a minute. What do you want, Bertha? Never mind what we want. Well, look here now, you can't push me out here like that. Don't you do it. Please, if you hold up, you're just not that Bertha. Oh, please. Talk to her, I'll let you have it. Don't point that gun at me, you're scaring me. All right, be quiet then. Just a minute there, Mrs. Walsh. Where do you think you're going? Why, why, what is it? Back in the bedroom there. I want to talk to you. You two, into the bedroom here. Oh, me? Yes, you. Joe. Yeah? Come on in here. Shorty, frisk the joint. Okay. What are you going to do, kill us? Oh, no, don't worry. You two just sit down on the bed there, back to back. That's it. Now, Joe, tie them together with a bed sheet. Why? Fine. <laughs> Looks like a pair of Siamese twins. Now, Mrs. Waltz, give me a diamond ring. I haven't any ring. Listen, lady, I ain't got any tender monkey. Now, you give me those rings or I'll let this get go right in your face. You look pretty then, wouldn't you? A hot lead slug might make your mascara run a little, huh? You can't frighten me, you hoodlum. I ain't trying to. I'm just telling you what's going to happen to you unless you give and give quick. Oh, tell him, Grace. Let him have the ring. Why, my goodness, he's even shot me. The bullet might kill me, too. He hasn't got the nerve. Oh, no? I'll give you three to tell me where they are. One, two... Oh, Grace, for heaven's sake, tell him. Are the rings all you want? What else you got? Nothing. You don't think we're interested in you moths, do you? Where are the rings? They're hidden in my shoe under the bed. Where? Right in front of you. Oh, yeah, I Is this all there is? Yes. You can't get anything for those rings now. You know diamonds are cheap. Yeah, I know. Well, well you can't get a hundred dollars for them. I'm afraid you're right. That guy sure played us for suckers, putting a finger on this joint. Why, he said the stuff is worth a grand. It'll cost me nearly a thousand dollars, but you can't get over a hundred for them. You try to sell it to a friend. But of course, I know where you can get more for them. Where? I'll buy them back from you. For how much? I'll give you five hundred for them. They mean a lot to me. They have a sentimental value. Sell them back to you and have you squawk to the bulls? Not much. I won't stop. I swear to you. You'd better not squat. Right here. See these plugs in this gas? We'll fill you full of them if you squat. But I won't. I just want to get my rings back. Well, I'll get in touch with a man who'll talk to you about it in a couple of days. Thanks a lot. And remember, no squawking to the top. Aren't you going to untie us? No. That mall that's out cold in the other room will unleash you when she wakes up. Come on, boys. Let's get out of here. I must say you three are perfect gentlemen. And a half hour later in the apartment of Mrs. Sadie Ransom, proprietor of the Elite Hotel on South Broadway, the three persons are crowded around the kitchen table and inspecting their meat. Hey, Sadie, got a pair of pliers? Yes, I do it in here. Bring them in. Okay, honey. Daddy, did you call that double-crossing socks and tell him to get up here? Yeah. Can you imagine it thing in a joint like that for us? Guaranteeing us that there'd be a grand at least in it? No, oh, we'd get a three bum diamond ring. Here it's my Okay, thanks. Now, this party's boss is out of the setting. Oh, the gold away. Well, how about that one there? That's pretty swell-looking stone. That set in itself ought to be worth something. All right, we'll keep that one the way it is. Okay, hey, Mickey. What is it, Joe? I don't like the looks of this thing. What do you mean? I want to get out. Okay, get out. Yeah, but I want my cut. How can I give you a cut when I don't know what it's going to be? Well, you could give me, say, uh, 30 bucks, and I'll forget I ever went down there with you. What's the matter? Got cold feet? I don't know, Mickey. I just don't like it. Okay, scram then. When do I get the door? When we puddle the ice. I'll let you know. Okay, Mickey. No hard feeling. Ah, forget it. You know how it is with the wife and the kids and 
I don't want to get no jail. Yeah, I know how it is. Now scram. Well, so long, Nicky. So long. Oh, what a yellow rat he is. Yeah, we have to keep an eye on him. He's clear at the top of a hat. Don't you think we ought to bump him off and make sure he don't? Not yet. Just keep an eye on him. See who that is, will you, Katie? Okay. It's shot, Mickey. Send him in here. Well, boy, what did we go? Why, you double-crosser, we ought to rub you out. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the beef? I ain't done nothing. You told us there was a grain in rocks down there. Well, there is. Here, call you him. Call Mr. Graham? Look, three bum rings. They ain't worth $100. The day myself, they tell. You over to buy them back for 500 and That's the most we could get for them anyway. Now, wait a minute, you guys. How much do you know about diamonds? Well, anybody can see that these aren't worth anything. Yeah? That's all you know about it. We ought to rub you out for giving us a bum steer like this. I didn't give you no bum steer. Well, I can go out and get a grand for this one ring here alone. A loan that you can get for those two small ones. You can? Sure. Okay. You take the ring and get a grand for it. Wait a minute, Mickey. You ain't gonna let this cheap tin horn walk out of here with that rock, are you? Say, hey, Shorty, I heard about enough out of you. You ain't heard nothing yet. I got a mind to fix you. All right, Shorty, hold on. I don't see no sense in letting me smug have the ring. Listen, Shorty, he knows where to puddle it and we don't, see? Well, I'd rather get a hundred for it and have the sense in my pocket than let him sell it for a grand and never see the color of his money. I ain't gonna take a powder on you. How do I know that? Listen, Shorty, stocks is on the up and up. He'll do the right thing. Well, if he don't, I'll take him for a nice long ride. You sure sound like a tough guy, Shorty. I know my racket. And I say you don't get the ring. And I say he does. You want to make something of that? Well, if you don't walk back here with a grand, it'll be on your neck too, Mr. Don't worry, boys. I'll get you a grand for it. I know a gambler down on Spring Street. He'll buy it. To the gambler on Spring Street goes Scott Fleur, the finger man. Within a half hour, he's sitting in the big Scott's office. Well, Scott, what can I do for you? Oh, little girl. I had London money. I got security. What? This rock. Uh, ain't worth much. I know it. Where'd you get it? What do you care? I don't. How much? Well, let's have a hundred bucks on it. That's okay. There you are. Thanks. Can do a little gambling? Maybe. <laughs> does a little gambling that night, and before he leaves the joint, he has lost the hundred dollars. Next morning, Mickey calls him. Hello? Hello, Pat. This is Mickey. Yeah? You get the bill for that room? Say, uh, Mickey, I'm in a spot about that. Oh, what do you mean? Well, to tell you the truth, Mickey, I lost the ring. You lost it? Yeah. Where? If I knew, I'd go find it. I stuck in my vest pocket when I left your joint last night. When I got downtown, it wasn't there. There was a hole in my pocket. And all that puts me with trouble. Yeah, I know, Mickey, and I'll try to make it up. Just give me a couple of days, and I'll raise some dough somewhere. You better raise some dough, and you better raise it fast. And that is the last Mickey hears a stop. Several days go by, and he and Shorty travel to Long Beach to try to find him, but no one has seen Fox for a week. Shorty is going impatient. Two weeks after the robbery, he is sitting with a friend, drinking home food. If you ask me, Bill, I think they're pulling a double fault on me. My guess is that Fox stole the ring and stick the dough with Mickey. I think that mug is holding out. Yeah, I wouldn't, Shorty. I never did like Mickey anyway. Well, you know, nobody can double cross me and get away with it. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have a showdown on this thing right now. Well, if you need any help, it's not on me. Okay, you're in. What are you going to do for it? I'm going to call Mickey over at Sadie's place and give him just one more chance.
What was it, honey? <laughs> oh, nothing. I just got 12 hours to live, that's all. But Mickey does not wait until this night. By 8 o'clock on the evening of January 17th, he enters Bill's apartment. Hello, boys. Hello, Mickey. Hello, Mickey. Have some beer. I never touch a gin with it. Okay. I forgot. Well, how about it, Mickey? You got the dough? No. Now, look here, Shorty. You got to be reasonable about this. I've been thing. reasonable, Mickey. Now, I want that dough. But I tell you, I can't find stock. I told you not to give him the rock in the first place. I know you did, but I thought he was on the up and up. How was I to know he crossed us up? Well, I could tell by looking at him. Anyway, I don't think he has crossed us up. He lost the ring, and he's trying to raise the dough somewhere. Oh, yeah? Sure. Naturally, he don't want to get in, in touch with me until he has it. Mickey, you talk like a baby in arms. Well, I believe his story. Well, I don't. Now, listen. I'll give you until midnight to get that dough. I know, but Christ, what do you want me to do? Blow up a bank? I can't do anything. My hands are tied. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go down to Long Beach and try and find that house. And if we do, we'll get that dough out of him or drop him off the dock in a barrel of wet cement. I'm sick and tired of this stuff. I want to see him just as bad as you do. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Come along, Bill. We might need your help. Yeah, you might as well. The three men get into Mrs. Ransom's car, which Shorty had previously borrowed, and start for Long Beach. But they never arrive. As they are approaching the Spring Street Bridge over the San Gabriel River north of the city. Got any idea where you're going to look for stuff? Yeah, I have, Mickey. How oh, about you here, Shorty? Just a good man. Pull up. There's nothing out here. No houses, nothing. What is Cox be doing out here? I ain't a good enough. Get out. What for? Don't give me your argument. Get out. What's the big idea, Shorty? This is a showdown. You understand? Yes, but... Uh, I'm doing the packing. Your turn will come next. I want to know what you did with the money from that rock. I never got no money for that rock. I told you the truth. Stock stole me and told me he lost it. And I ain't seen him or the ring since. You're lying, Mickey. Stock stole that ring and you split the dough. That isn't true, Shorty. Listen, Mickey. Nobody's ever double-crossed means I waited it. Now... What'd you do with your part of the money? I ain't got no cut, Shorty. I swear to God, I ain't. Well, what is this stuff over here with him? Shorty is good as for him. Mother, mother. No, Shorty, Bill. For God's sake, don't. Don't. I've been telling you the truth. I swear now I can't. you can't take it, huh, Mickey? Sure I can take it. Sure I can. I got more guts than you ever had. I ain't got nothing to lose but my life. I'm clean. I'm on the up and up. Go on, rub me out. Rub me out and see if you can take it. You're a big shot with a rod in your face, ain't you? You're a cheap little hijacker. Well, can't you do a better job on that? Yeah. That did the work. Come on, Bill. Let's jump him over this bridge here. Come on. There he goes. <laughs>
Deputy Sheriff Warner is speeding toward Los Angeles. Shorty returns to the hotel. Oh, Shorty, I've been going nearly crazy. Where is he? Where is he? Take it easy, take it, take it easy. What's he doing? What are you doing? Making him out very double crossing. What do you mean? Shorty, where is Mickey? But he said, tell me, let me say it. I bumped him off. Oh, I'll pipe down your street, he said. He's dead, see? Dead. Missing James. No. No. I can't believe it. It's so. And you killed him? Yes. Oh, I love you, so Judy. Oh, Judy. Oh, Judy. He never thought it. He told me he and Doc stole the ring and spit it out. He had a fight. He took a pass at me and I let him have it. Listen, baby, this is straight. This is the fourth guy that double crossed me, and they've all gone the same way. They, there's none of them can double cross me and get away from it. You get him? He's so I'm so Okay, and keep the pass back. You probably suppose now. I'm taking the powder. You talk to him, you don't know nothing, see? Yes? What is it? Is this one of your cards? Yes. Why? I'm from the sheriff's office. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Yes. You recognize this hat and wristwatch? Why, uh, yes. I think they belong to Mickey Irma. A board this man. That's fine. Get on your hat and coat. We're going to the morgue. <laughs> Got that long beach shooting poster. Right there behind you. Pull down the seat, will you? Thanks. Yeah. Well, is that the body of Mickey Arno, your boarder, Mrs. Anson? No. Yes, I And the next morning, Captain Blake holds a council of war with his men who have spent half the night setting up on Mickey Arno's friends, acquaintances, and relatives. Well, boys, what have you got? Well, after Mrs. Ransom identified the body, she took me out to Compton, where I interviewed Erno's brother-in-law. From him, I learned the identity of Joe Enfriante. He's been mixed up with Erno in some crazy deals. I asked Contreras to bring him in. Where was he now, Contreras? I got him outside, Captain. Good. We'll question him a little later. Hello? Yes, he's right here. Just a minute. See you, Barnard. Oh, thanks, sir. Hello? Yes? He is, eh? Okay, I'll be right out. Hey, he's just walked into Mrs. Ransom. You see, another call of her notes. Mrs. Ransom promised me she'd kick me off as he came around. I'll see you later, boys. Okay. Better bring in this man of yours, Contreras. Yes, sir. All right, come on in, Yes, sir. Sit down. Over there. Yes, sir. What's your name? Joe and Fiance. Did you kill Mickey Erno? No. Who did? I don't know. Do you know Mickey Erno? Yes. How long? About four months. You know Shorty Hayes? Yes. What did you kill Mickey for? I didn't kill him. Now we know you were mixed up with some shady deals with him. I ain't mixed up a murder. I got a wife and kids. I ain't hot. What job were you on with Mickey? Oh, I wasn't on any jobs with you him. No different. Well, only one. Where? Well, I only drove the car down and drove it back. I'm clean, I tell you. I just drove Mickey down there. Mickey and Shorty. Then I drove them back and they showed me some diamonds when they got back. How many diamonds? Oh, a couple of three rings. I'm clean, I tell you. Well, when was this? Oh, Christmas week sometime. Hey, sounds like that great war robbery, Jeb. Right. What did you murder any for? I didn't murder Mickey. I ain't seen Mickey since that night. All right. I was in on that robbery. But I didn't do no bump off. All right, then. Start talking about that robbery. And while Deputy Sheriff Barner speeds toward Mrs. Ransom's hotel, Joe and Triante still tells the details of the Great Waltz robbery, talks fast to save his neck from the long stretch from which there is no rebound. And at the hotel of Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Mrs. Ransom. Where is it? He just went out for packing his cigarettes. What is this, a runaround? No, I swear it is. Come in. Sit down. He'll be back in a minute. I told you to keep him here. It's okay. He'll be back. I ain't holding back on you. I've got a little girl. I ain't getting mixed up in trouble. When do you come back? 
I don't know how far it goes. What did he say? Well, he said, I read the paper, and I told him you were looking for him. And he said, what for? And I said, they want to talk him with his friends. They've got Joe this morning, and he turned around real quick, and he said, what? They did, eh? And I said, Shorty, I said, don't you think you'd better report him? I told him I promised to call you, and he said, okay, call the bull. I can prove my alibi, all right? And then you let him go again. No, I didn't. Listen, here he comes up the floor now. Right, okay. This is Deputy Sheriff Barnes, Shorty. Yeah? Yeah. I want to ask you a few questions, Shorty. Okay with me. Want to take a ride down to the captain's office? Sure, I just love to ride in police cars. Come on, let's go. Hockey, self-assured, Shorty Hayes accompanies Deputy Sheriff Barnes to headquarters. There to face Captain Bright. What's your name? Fred Hayes. Have I been arrested before? Yes, twice. What for? Keeping fast one, paid a ten dollar fine. And the second time? Picked up for drunk, then they let me go. This picture here, Marcelli County number seven two 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 eight. Who is that here, my Hayes? You? Yes. An alien, huh? Yes. Who is Fred Bates? I don't know. Fred Miller. Never heard of him. And Joe Miller. Not the one that wrote to Joe's book. I don't know. Really, your memory is bad. But they're all aliases for Fred Hayes. How many times have you been in this jail? Twice. Only two times I've been in jail my life. Oh, come on now, sure. You've got a record as long as my arm. It's all here on this time. Suspicious of burglary, forgery, passing bad checks. You've been on the bad books for five years. You're an ex-con, and you served two years at a 14-year sleep in Quentin. Isn't that right? Well, what are you asking me for? You, you didn't know all about me. You're down right, I do, and a lot more. Now, why did you kill Mickey Erno? I didn't kill Mickey Erno. Ever on a gun? No. And what did you carry the empty shells around in your pocket for? Sound like loose chains? I don't know what you're talking about. You showed Mrs. Ransom a handful of empty shells after you came back and told her that you bumped off Eno. Now, why did you do that? I ain't talking. No? Well, that won't do you any good. What did you do with the diamonds you stole from Mrs. Walsh in Long Beach Christmas week? I ain't talking. And how about that poor girl you smacked in the kitchen? I never smacked any woman in the kitchen. No? And Mrs. Ransom tells you she was threatened to bump her off if she talked. Well, I, I can take the seat. But I ain't going around smacking beans or threatening any beans. You've got some interesting witnesses lined up who will say you did. Mrs. Walsh has already identified your picture. I never smacked any beans except that Marla hit with a beer bottle once. I didn't hurt her none. And she had to come to her anyway. Now, we got Joe Impianti upstairs, and he told us all about that robbery in Long Beach. And the boys are bringing in such brewers. And Mrs. Ransom is worried more about her little daughter's future than she is about your threat. And she told us all that she knows. And that'll be enough to put you in a tough spot. Listen, I, I can take it. See, you, you can't scare me. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to make you see sense. Looks like I'm going away for a long time. Looks like my neck's going to stretch. But I can take it. See, boy, how I can take it. You can't scare me. You can't make me talk. I'm not. Who is in on this job with you? I ain't talking. Why did you bump off Mickey? I ain't talking. Why did you bump off Mickey Yerno? I ain't talking to no me. Only what? Only I can take it. See, boy, how I can take it. Go ahead, stretch my neck. I can take it like a man. <laughs> Chief Criminal Deputy Sheriff Bright and his efficient officers got them all. Shorty Hayes received a life term in San Quentin for murder, and Bill Doolin, his partner in crime, got the same measure of justice. Sox Brewer went to San Quentin for robbery, and Joe Entriante, pleading guilty to robbery, got two years in the county road camp and eight more years probation. The, the ironic part of the thing is that Mickey Erno had been honest with Shorty, but Shorty operated on the opposite theory from that of your law enforcement officer. With him, everyone was guilty until he proved himself innocent, and he didn't give hapless Mickey Erno the chance to make the proof. Thank you, Justice Hayes. Free to boys and girls, Rio Grande offers free gifts. And to all motorists, Rio Grande offers more speed than you can ever use, more power than you'll ever need, more mileage, more value for your money. You get all these extra features free with every gallon of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. And it costs you no more to buy this tetra ethyl treated gasoline, refined by the most costly and elaborate cracking process known. 
This patented process gives you something found in no other gasoline. Police car performance. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Attention all Los Angeles County Sheriff's Guard. Cancellation brought 108. Regarding a dead body found north of Long Beach. This case is now closed. That's all. Close the case. of the Calling All Cars News. Given away wherever Rio Grande cracks gasoline is sold. This is your narrator, Patrick Lindsay.